going now to John in Waterloo, Iowa. John, you are on with Jimmy Aiken. What is your question? Well, I had a question about who wrote uh, the book of Revelation attributed okay. to John. Okay. And I had called the public library here to get the answer. Oh, boy. And she told me, and she told me that nobody knew who wrote any of the Gospels, that oh. they were all anonymous, mm. that okay. they didn't know. And I said, well, what about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Mm -hmm. And she said, well, a pope in the year 101 determined that they were the one that wrote the Gospels. And I thought, that doesn't make sense to me. Okay. So a friend of mine gave me your number to get the correct answer that the Catholic Church teaches. Okay. Who wrote the bot, the bot, and how did they know that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John wrote them? Okay. Well, um, this is an illustration of not relying on the reference desk at your library for religious knowledge. Uh, do not trust the eternal fate of your soul to to a reference librarian, as much as the good work they often do is. Um, the Church doesn't have a teaching about who wrote the Gospels or the Book of Revelation. Um, it, uh, it considers that a question of history rather than of faith. The important thing is that these documents are the inspired Word of God, and we can trust them. And so that's the, the most important thing. The question of who did God use as his instruments in writing them, is, uh, is a, a secondary question. Now, having said that, uh, that doesn't mean we can't know something about who wrote them. Um, in the case of the book of Revelation, it expressly identifies itself as being by John. It, it, it doesn't give us much more information than that, but it does indicate it was written by someone named John. And the majority opinion um, has down through history has been that it's John the son of Zebedee who is the brother of James, one of the okay. original twelve apostles. That's been the majority opinion down through history, and that's the opinion most people have today. There has been some dispute about that, though. Uh, in the early centuries and also today, there was some thought that it may have been a different John, and that's something that Pope Benedict talked about, actually, that uh, the author, since he chose not to further identify himself, apparently wanted to leave this as a bit of a mystery. It was known to his original audience who he was, but he didn't want to lock it down for everybody by making it fully explicit. Um, in terms of the Gospels, it's not really accurate to say they're anonymous. Something's anonymous if the author deliberately hides himself so that, you know, if I wrote a book and sent it to a publisher and told the publisher, don't put my name on it so no one will know who I am, well, that would be an anonymous book. But if I wrote you a note, Cy, mm -hmm. and I put it on your desk, and even if I didn't sign it, you could see, okay, this is my penmanship, so you know it's by Jimmy. Right. Well, it's not really anonymous, even though it doesn't have my name on it. And that's the situation we have with the four Gospels, because they were written to specific people, like Luke was written to a guy he refers to as Theophilus. Well, Theophilus obviously know, knows who's writing to him. Uh, he, uh, he probably was Luke's patron. He probably paid for Luke to be able to write that gospel, to gather all the materials, because back then books were really expensive. And so Theophilus certainly knew who Luke was, so Luke wasn't an anonymous work. The same way with the other Gospels, uh, the evangelists were not rich men, so they needed sponsors, just like we do here on Catholic Answers. Uh, <laughs> nice tie-in. They, tie -in, they <laughs> needed supporters uh, to make their work possible, and so the, the people who were supporting them obviously knew who wrote these books. They were the first audiences of the books. And this is... Uh, I guess kind of where the rubber hits the road in a certain respect, the names Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were attached to the Gospels from the first century onward. It was necessary that uh, as soon as you had more than one Gospel in a congregation being read, you needed to have ways to refer to them. And so right there from the first century onward, <clears throat> the names Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were attached to these Gospels, and so that's who wrote them. We have first century evidence that that's the case. It wasn't a later pope. It was the practice of the Church from the first century onward to use these names for them as their authors. And that's something that the uh, German scholar Martin Hengel uh, has written uh, very incisively about.